Hello, I'm Mr. Pleasant Books. For this book talk, we'll be discussing the second book in the Simon R. Green series in I Side, Agents of Light and Darkness. In this one, we have John going up against heaven and hell, angels both from above and below. We see him looking for the unholy grail, the, the, the cup that Judas Iscariot drank out of at the Last Supper. Um, I never heard of the unholy grail myself until I read this book. But it, it is an interesting idea and an interesting concept. I think that's all I can say for now without spoilers. So just from here forward, there will be spoilers. So if you don't want to hear it, don't listen. If you don't care, keep going. Hope you enjoy. All right, bye. Agents of Light and Darkness. <sighs> okay. This one we meet Jessica Sorrow. And she sounds scary, honestly. And even John is terrified of her because she's she's also known as the unbeliever. Her her whatever happened to her in the past made her stop believing so powerfully in everything that she can literally wink you out of existence if she wants to. That if she looks at you and concentrate hard enough, you just disappear like you never were. That is a terrifying being to come up against. And and she She's been around is, is for a while. Like, she goes to sleep for years and then wakes up, wanders around the night side, scaring everyone, and then leaves again. <laughs> but, you know, in this time, she's woken up and she's caused a lot more damage than normal, I guess. So John was hired to, to find whatever it was that she always seems to be looking for. And he does. He finds it. It's a teddy bear. A little teddy bear that she had when she was a child. And he finds it. He heads to... The Chapel of St. Jude because it's the only real church in the night side. Some say it's even older than Christianity, however that works. But he goes there because it's a place of such faith and strength that he hopes it'll be able to counteract uh, Jessica Sorrow a little bit. And it, it, I don't know if it really does, I mean, because when she comes up the door, they just disappear into nothing in front of her. And when she steps, her steps are so powerful because she believes she's the only real thing in the world that actually cracks the stones under her feet. But when she gets the bear, she decides to stop. That's what she wanted. That's what she needed. Something from her past that wasn't so horrible and evil and nasty that it made her stop believing in everything. She takes the bear, goes back to wherever her lair, and... John is like, whew, I made it. I'm going to get paid. <laughs> but then as he's sitting there, uh, somebody runs in, and this person is sewing their eyes shut and holds up a cup in front of the altar saying, protect me, when this darkness comes through the door and turns this person into a pillar of salt. John thinks it's weird, but, you know, it's a nice side. Weird happens all the time, so he just heads back to Strange Fellows. At Strange Fellows, he meets an agent for the Vatican, uh, somebody who says, the unholy grail is on the night side, we need you to find it, we'll pay you $250,000, or pounds, if you find this horse. John says, I'm in, done, let's do it. But he decides he's going to get help. So he goes to Shotgun Susie to help him. And he can't use his power, because when he tried to use it, the angels kidnapped him, ripped him out of his own mind, like I said, both from above and below, and they brought him to this limbo area to make him look for them and he says no i'm looking for the vatican mind your own business and of course they want to attack him but he tricks them into fighting each other so he can escape and then he goes find Susie. they head out go looking as john and Susie are going through the knife side looking for the unholy grail john is teaching a little little bit about being a private eye but he keeps keeps changing the first rule of being a private eye to whatever situation he's in at the moment. <laughs> but, but one of the people that they get told to go see is Nasty Jack Starlight, which is someone who does plays and dances for the undead, like the werewolves, vampires, zombies, mummies, because he feeds on their undead essence to live himself, but also entertains them and helps them feel like they're human and alive again, like they're not the monsters that they are. But while they're, while they're talking to Nasty Jack, an angel shows up, kills Nasty Jack, and he deserves And then they head to, to the Crusade headquarters. In this place, 
you know, it's like the Crusades from uh, the 1100s or whatever. It's that's still going on. Kill the unbelievers, kill the Gentiles, kill everyone who's not the chosen. And, and the nice side, it does like it, I, I don't want to live there. It just has horrible people with horrible feelings and horrible beliefs in this place. And again, I'm glad that the Crusader people, when John showed up, that they were all dead. Because there's just so many people in the night side who deserve to die. They're not good people. And and I... It, it's horrible to say, but... That, that just seems to be the night side's raison d'etre. Just be a horrible person, gain power, and you can do whatever you want. And that's... I don't like that. I don't like that. It's just... It's not, not a good way to be. The nice side is horrible. I'm glad John is there because he takes down the bad people. But there's just so many bad people in the nice side. And, and even when he gets to the crusade, it's Razor Eddie who's killed everyone, who's brought him there and, and told him to help him find the, whole, the unholy grail. When this other person shows up named Bell, who's who t can rip the power out of somebody and put it into herself. Like she's wearing the pelt of a werewolf to gain his healing ability. She's torn the feet off of the god Hermes in order to be super fast. She's torn the hands and arms off of a vampire so that she has claws that can rip you open. Uh, and John, John gets her, uses his power, breaks whatever it is that holds everything together so she just falls to pieces. But that happened after she had already ripped open Susie. So after, after John makes her fall to pieces, he grabs a werewolf. Squeezes it so the blood from Su uh, blood from the werewolf gets into Susie, so that she can heal and recover from being torn open, and it works. Susie comes back. They find out that the collector has the unholy grail. They they can't. And then nobody knows where the collector is because his collection is hidden, so that people can't find it. So they head back to Strange Fellows, just to see if somebody knows where the collector might be. And they raise Merlin Satan Spawn to keep the angels out of the out of the strange fellows, because the angels are trying to get in. And when they raise Merlin, he reaches out, grabs the collector, brings him to strange fellows, <laughs> so that they can get the unholy grail to get the angels out of the night side, because the angels aren't supposed to be in the night side. And it it was kind of some covenant that was made in the when the night side was created that no angels. No interference from above or below is allowed on the night side. But uh, Merlin sends the collector, John and Susie, back to the moon, which is uh, where the, the collector's collection is, to get the unholy grail. And of course the collector turns on him because the unholy grail messes with your mind. And he sends these, these cat robots at John and Susie. <laughs> and Susie just starts un, you know, unloading. She throws grenades, she shoots with her shotgun. Just destroys, destroys, destroys as they get closer and closer. Until finally they're so close that John turns up, turns on his power and shuts them all off. And Susie, <laughs> I love this part because Susie turns in, you could have done that from the beginning. Why did you wait? And John's answer, you looked like you were having fun. I didn't want to interrupt that. <laughs> uh, I need friends like that who just let me destroy and break things because it looks like I'm having fun. That, and honestly, destroying the robots, the cat robots, I think would be a blast. <laughs> but yeah, uh, they, get, they get the Unholy Grail, they head back, they find out that their client, the person from the Vatican, is Judas Iscariot himself. And in the Nyside legend here, uh, Jesus found Judas and forgave him. You know, after Judas hung himself, cut him down, brought him back to life and forgave him. But Judas didn't forgive himself, and so he said... Let me stay on earth and do penance until I can forgive myself for what I did to you. And that's how he's still alive. But he takes the, the chalice, the unholy grail, drinks from it, which removes his power. The angels all leave. Merlin goes back into his grave, because he's dead. He had his heart ripped out by Nimue. And so he goes back into the grave. Right? Just cause, what was it that they say? Just because you're dead doesn't mean you're not a major player in the night side. Now, that that helps you understand a little bit more about how the night side works, and you know John makes all of his money. Also, he resists the voice of Walker, the voice that has, as rumor has it, made a dead man sit up and confess his sins. And John resists it, although they think it's because he had the unholy grail next to him. I think it's because John, John's mother, is how he was able to resist it. 
and that's what the book is. oh wait there's one more thing they they did it i'm so glad they did it but after judas drank and was leaving john yells out hey jude <laughs> Uh, I'm so glad he pulled that line. He had to do it. I'm glad he took that opportunity. Because it was perfect. But yeah, the book ends. It was, it was a lot better than the first book to me. I Personally, I think you should start with Agents of Light and Darkness if you're going to read The Night Side. But you do need to read the first book to find out why John is there, why he came back, why he so cares about Kathy, his secretary. And uh, But yeah, but yeah the Agents of Light and Darkness, a lot better than the first book. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you liked it. Uh, thank you for listening. I'm Mr. Pleasant Books. Bye.